No matter where you venture on this planet, you're almost guaranteed to come face to face with a structure that is a testament to the genius of human engineering. Bridges and skyscrapers to highways and dams, they all serve an incredible purpose and our lives are definitely made better by their existence. Unfortunately, not every project is completed without a hitch. Sometimes things fail, leading to catastrophic disasters that end up costing millions, sometimes billions, to fix. From the collapse of a factory to the world's most terrifying dam failure, here are five of the world's worst engineering catastrophes. When it comes to things like regulations and enforcement, there are very few Asian countries that are known for adhering to them, or even having them. How many news reports and undercover investigations have we seen where some places skirt child labor laws, fire safety codes, or some other regulation? Sadly, it's more commonplace than many are comfortable with. All of these laws are put into place to protect workers and are often overlooked to increase production and profits. They may get away with it for some time, but all it takes is one thing to go wrong for a major disaster to occur. That's exactly what happened in Dhaka, Bangladesh on April 24th of 2013. That day, a factory building collapsed, taking the lives of more than 1,100 workers. Investigations started right away, and it didn't take long to track down what happened. The 400-page report on the building's collapse found a myriad of issues. The problem came with the building's construction, which was done with incredibly substandard materials and in blatant disregard for building codes. However, what made it worse was that the city's mayor, who granted the approval for the building owner and construction company, knew of these problems beforehand. Being in need of a source of income for the city, they pushed through in spite of the danger. They knew of evidence that the building was unsafe for workers to be in, but urged them to come into work anyway, ignoring the problem that eventually resulted in many of their deaths. The building's owner and other factory owners were eventually charged with culpable homicide and city officials were charged with bribery. Hurricanes and typhoons are known for being deadly because of their wind, size, and the dangerous storm surge that comes with them. However, we can't ever discount the incredible volume of rain that they can dump on places, causing flash floods and washing away entire landscapes. Depending on where the storms hit, these flash floods can bring about more damage than people are ready for. In August of 1975, in the western Henan province of China, a typhoon rolled through the region and dumped 40 inches of water. On the first day the storm hit. This region was also home to the Ru River, which was prone to flooding. The nearby Ban Chao Dam that had been built in the 1950s to help control flooding quickly came into a critical state of danger. At the time of its construction, it was touted as being able to withstand what was known as a 1,000-year flood, or a flood that is only seen once every millennium. Typhoon Nina produced floods that were twice those levels, and the dam simply couldn't hold it. On August 8, 1975, the Ban Chao Dam collapsed, releasing the full force of the already flooded river. A wave measuring over 35 feet in height and being nearly 7 miles wide in some areas rushed downstream at about 30 miles per hour. Many towns along the river were completely destroyed and their entire populations wiped out, including the town of Daowencheng, where all 9,600 of its residents perished. The absence of an early warning system or an evacuation plan made everything worse. 26,000 people lost their life as a result of the flooding, but the famine and epidemics that followed resulted in nearly 198,000 additional deaths. The official death toll after everything was said and done was more than 220,000 people. The Chinese government regards this incident as a natural one as opposed to a man-made one from poor construction. Still. Details about this disaster weren't officially released until 2005, so we may never fully understand what went wrong. 
In the early 1900s, natural gas was a new thing when it came to heating homes, offices, and factories. At the time, underground pipes and systems were not commonplace. In actuality, above-ground, low-pressure storage systems were used. So, in various neighborhoods and cities across the country, you could see these storage systems. Additionally, every city would typically have a central above-ground storage hub where all of the available natural gas would be held. In Cleveland, Ohio, the East Ohio Gas Company built a full-scale commercial liquid natural gas plant in 1940. It had three storage containers, approximately 63 feet in diameter each, which held the equivalent of about 50 million cubic feet of natural gas. A fourth one was eventually built that could hold 100 million cubic feet. On the afternoon of October 20, 1944, the fourth tank began to emit a vapor that poured from a seam in the side of the tank. Being heavier than air, it traveled along the ground in the eastern part of Cleveland. It leaked into the sewers where it mixed with air and sewer gas. Suddenly, the gas ignited and the ensuing explosion sent manhole covers soaring skyward. One ended up being found about five miles east in the Cleveland neighborhood of Glenville. A second explosion followed when one of the other gas tanks ignited. Homes were engulfed in an instant. Nearly a full square mile of neighborhood was completely leveled by the blast that was around a sixth of the power of the Hiroshima atomic bomb. In total, 130 people lost their lives. But it could have been much worse had it happened at a time when people were not at work or at school. This disaster led to the rethinking of above-ground storage of natural gas nationwide. The Quebec Bridge is a road, rail, and pedestrian bridge that crosses over the lower St. Lawrence River between St. Foy and Lévis in Quebec, Canada. Measuring over 3,200 feet across, it is a heavily traveled thoroughfare and is the longest cantilever bridge span in the world. What's crazy is that this bridge is over 100 years old and it ran into some serious problems during its first few years of operation. Construction of the bridge had been planned since the late 1800s, but ran into a number of financial roadblocks. Finally, in the early 1900s, construction got underway. Things were going well until early 1907 when engineering teams started noticing that the bridge was becoming increasingly distorted having odd bends in the shape. However, the construction company claimed that the beams must have been bent before being purchased and urged to continue construction. On August 29, 1907, the south area of the bridge collapsed, killing 75 of the 86 workers. The rest suffered severe injuries but survived. A short time later, construction started on a second bridge, the new bridge was to look like the first bridge with a single long cantilever span, but this one would have a much more massive structure with it. On September 11th of 1916, the middle span was being raised into position. During the lift, disaster struck and it fell into the river below, killing 13 workers. Once again, it was a risk that was identified weeks before but ignored in order to complete construction. Finally, after more than 30 years of work, the Quebec Bridge was completed in 1919. When it comes to the marvels of engineering, there is no denying that nuclear reactors rank as one of the most amazing. The ability to control nuclear reactions in order to produce energy is one of the greatest scientific breakthroughs of the 20th century. But these nuclear reactions are in controlled environments. When things get out of control, that's when disasters happen. There have been very few reactor meltdowns in human history, but the most well-known was that of Reactor 4 at the Chernobyl power plant in the Ukraine. In 1986, during a test at low power, the nuclear reaction inside Reactor 4 got out of control. This resulted in a huge explosion that blew the top off of the reactor and the roof off of the building, releasing incredible amounts of nuclear radiation into the atmosphere. The nearby town of Pripyat, where the factory's workers and their families lived, was the first place for these radioactive particles to travel. The entire town had to be evacuated. Fire crews were called to try and control the blaze. Within three months, 
28 of them died from acute radiation sickness. Over the years, many thousands of other people were reported to have died due to complications from radiation exposure. There was a number of problems that contributed to this meltdown being as disastrous as it was. First, the workers conducting the test on the day of the explosion were not adequately trained. Also, rescue crews did not have the right equipment to handle a disaster of this type. Finally, as Ukraine was under Soviet control, the communist country did everything it could to conceal and downplay this disaster. Help was turned away, people were given false narratives in order to keep peace, and actual witnesses to the events were silenced. All of these things surely led to more casualties than there needed to be. It's a stifling thought that what seems like a normal day can turn into disaster without warning. It's one reason why disasters exact such a heavy toll on people. Only a few months ago, on July 24th of 2021, in the Miami suburb of Surfside, Florida, the world witnessed this firsthand. In Miami and the surrounding areas, summer is a time where people come to the beach to relax and get away from daily life. It was about 1.25 in the morning, and people were fast asleep in Champlain Towers South, a 12-story beachfront condo building. Nearly all of the units had been rented or were being lived in. Without warning, as people slept, around half of the building collapsed, leaving behind a pile of concrete rubble. Rescuers were very quick to respond. Four people were rescued from the rubble, but one died at the hospital from the injuries. The uncollapsed portion of the building, which still held 35 people, was in critical danger of also collapsing. Thankfully, all 35 of them were able to be rescued. Rescue and relief operations were conducted over the next two weeks, but no other survivors were found. 98 people perished as a result of the collapse. The main contributing factor to the collapse was long-term degradation of the concrete structural support in the ground-level parking garage. It was caused by water penetration and corrosion. The problem was reported in 2018 and even noted again in April of 2021. Plans had been made to correct the problems, but it was too little too late. Some of these disasters are the result of natural occurrences, while others are from simple human oversight or error. Sadly, they all result in loss of life. Hopefully, they are lessons for the future. To see more videos of ours just like this one, be sure to click the link on screen now. With that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.